order Calvin Huffley. That's how you pronounce your name? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm Judge Carol Brownlee. I'm going to be conducting a bond hearing on you this afternoon. I'm going to go over your rights as a defendant and make sure that you understand all your rights. Um, Mr. Huffman, you have been charged with warrant number 2022-8011010207 for ill treatment of animals. Um, Mr. Huffman, as a defendant, you do have a right and obligation to plead not guilty to this charge. If you plead not guilty to this charge, you have a right to request a jury trial. A jury of 12 people will listen to the testimony in the case, view the evidence in the case, and they will determine whether you're innocent or guilty of this charge of ill treatment of animals. Mr. Huffman, the charge that you have been charged with is a felony charge. If you are convicted of this charge, or if you plead guilty to this charge, your maximum penalty is the judge can find can give you no less than 80, 180 days in jail and not to exceed five years in jail. And he can order you to pay $5,000, pay a $5,000 fine. That's your maximum sentence that you can receive if you are found guilty or if you plead guilty to this charge of ill treatment of animals. Mr. Huffman, also as a defendant, you do have a right and obligation to have representation meaning that if you cannot afford your own attorney, one will be appointed to you. If you want a public defendant to represent you in court, I will do the necessary paperwork today. Um, but also, if you decide that you want to obtain your own attorney, you can do that. But if you cannot afford your, your attorney, again, like I said, um, a public defendant will be appointed to you. And I will get you to sign that paperwork also. Mr. Huffman, do you have any question regarding your maximum sentence that you can receive? Yes, ma'am. What questions do you have on that? That's what I told you that the judge could give you if you are found guilty or if you plead guilty. So pretty much if I plead guilty today. You can't I'll... plead guilty today. Uh -oh. I'm going to go over that with you. You cannot plead guilty today. This is a general session court charge, and that's why I have to go over your rights with you. Yes, but I have to tell you what you're facing. Okay? Yes, All right. Do you have any questions about um, a jury trial? Okay. Mr. Huffman, you have two very important court dates that you must appear in court. Your first court date is what we call the initial court appearance. That court date is scheduled um, for May the 6th. You said May the 6th. I'm going to give you a copy of that. Your first court date is scheduled for May the 6th, 2022 at 10 o'clock at the Abbeville County Courthouse. This is what we call the initial court appearance. Your second court date is, is a docket appearance, and it is scheduled for June the 22nd, June the 24th, at 11 o'clock at the Abbeville County Courthouse. These are mandatory court appearances. If you fail to come to court, a bench warrant will be issued for your arrest. Again, these are mandatory court appearances. I will get you to sign your paperwork on this. Also, um, Mr. Huffman, as a defendant, as I stated earlier, you do have rights. You also have a right to represent yourself in court if you so desire. That is your constitutional right. However, um, self-representation is very dangerous because you're not a licensed attorney. But if you want to represent you, you can do that. Again, that is your constitutional right. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Huffman, as a defendant, I have to get some pertinent information regarding you, but before I do that, I have to tell you as a defendant, if you decide to plead not guilty to this charge, and if you want to have a preliminary hearing, you do have a right to have a preliminary hearing. You have 10 days to request a preliminary hearing. A preliminary hearing is a probable cause hearing. So if you want a preliminary hearing, you do have a right to request a preliminary hearing. I will get you to sign that form also. Everything that I'm going over with you, I'm getting you to sign your form, and you will receive a copy of all of this. Any questions regarding a preliminary hearing? Okay. Um, I'm going to get the officer to go ahead and get you to sign the, um, these pertinent forms that I have already gone over with you. The first form, you can have a seat. He will bring this to you. Your first form is your rights form. He's going to get you to sign that. 
You sign this out at the tick mark, and then your next form is going to be your mandatory court appearances. Everything I'm getting you to sign, Mr. Huffman, is exactly what I've gone over with you thus far. Yes, <clears throat> the Faretta warning is exactly what I've just explained to you regarding, um, as a defendant, you do have a right to represent yourself. The bottom of this form states, it says, at this time I do or I do not wish to be screened for a court appointed attorney and I wish to proceed with my trial at this time. This is not your trial, this is a bond hearing. So I'm not going to circle either one of them because you may want to um, apply for a public defender. So I'm going to have to get you to sign this one. This just tells you about your constitutional right and the consequences um, if you represent yourself. Get you to sign this form. This is your preliminary hearing form. If you desire to have a preliminary hearing, again, you have 10 days to request a preliminary hearing. You need to mail this form back to our office. You can hand deliver it to our office, or you can fill it out and leave it with the detention officer, and they can give it back to us. But you have 10 days to send this form in if you want a preliminary hearing, okay? Mr. Huffman, do you think you want a public defendant to represent you? Or are you undecided? At this time, I'm undecided. Okay. If you decide that you want a public defendant to represent you because I'm not filling out the paperwork now, you have to go to the Abbeville Perk Courts Office, which is located at the Abbeville County Courthouse, and apply for a public defender. Yes. That fee is $40. They will fill out the necessary information for you. Um, and if you qualify, they will submit your paperwork to the public defender's office, okay? But um, since you said that you undecided, I'm not going to fill this application out for the public defender, okay? All right. I get you to initial this form right here. Everything that I have highlighted, you're going to initial the number. Just put your initial on it. Then you're going to turn on the back and you're going to sign this form. And what you're signing, you're stating that all the information that you're going to provide to me is um, true and accurate, um, and I'm going to ask you where you reside at, your address, your mailing address, and your telephone number, all the pertinent information. Everything that you tell me, you're acknowledging that this is true. And also, if you move from your residence, you need to make sure you keep the courts notified of your whereabouts at all times. If this charge is dismissed or you're found not guilty or if the charge is not crossed, by law, the agency has to submit your paperwork to um, SLED to get this charge expunged off of your criminal history at no cost to you. Any questions regarding that? Okay, I'm going to get you to sign, initial each form, and you're going to sign it on the back. Mr. Huffman, after explaining everything to you thoroughly regarding ill treatment 
of animal that's the charge you have been charged with. I'm going to get some information on you. Right now, are you the owner of the dog? Are you the owner of the dog? Yes, ma'am. You are the owner. Did the um, law enforcement have, do they have custody of the dog? Yes, ma'am. And where's the dog's, where's the, is two puppies? Yes, ma'am. You're the owner of both puppies? Yes, ma'am. Just one of the puppies? Yes, ma'am. What um, law enforcement agency has the dog, has seized the dog? Anderson County. Anderson County has that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Huffman, um, after reviewing your criminal history, I noticed that you do not have anything disturbing on your criminal history, and based on that information, um, I am going to set your bond at a amount of $5,000. This is a personal recognizance bond. And the reason I'm setting your bond at $5,000 is because you're not considered a flight risk. And a bond is to assure that you will, your appearance back in court. I've spoken with um, the investigator regarding this charge. And also, I am making a decision to release you on your own recognizance based on your age and based on the fact that you don't have anything pending on your criminal history. At this time, Mr. Huffman, can you tell me what's your address? Okay. Do you work anywhere? Uh, not right now. What is, your, what is your telephone number? Okay. I'm going to get you to sign your bond form. Again, your bond is set in the amount of $5,000. The conditions that I'm placing upon you that you must appear in court as required. You must have permission to leave the state and you must not own any more puppies or dogs until this case has been disposed of. Understand? Yes, Any questions regarding the conditions of your bond? No, ma'am. I'll get you to sign your bond form. Sure. This yes. will conclude this bond hearing. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, actually, I do have a question. Okay. I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, the bond, like, since, do, do I get out of jail tonight? Yes, sir, I'm sending you a bond at $5,000. This is a personal recognizance bond. Your signature is worth $5,000. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't know if I understood you correctly. And you're surprised. Ma'am. No. You didn't understand? You didn't understand your bond? No, I understood it, but I didn't know if I understood you correctly. Okay. Yes, ma'am. 